In our last unit for this course, we're going to spend some time taking a look at formulas. Formulas are a mathematical way that we can represent relationships between real life variables that we can then use if we know certain variables, certain unknown or certain values, we can then solve for a single unknown value out of those relationships. One common example of a formula that you have seen over the years is D equals RT. This is a formula that we use uh, that relates the distance, the rate of time, the rate of how fast you're traveling and the time that you're spent traveling and there's this particular relationship. Now if you end up having to solve, this is a great formula and the distance notices by itself, but suppose that you want to find out the rate and you're given lots of different distances and times. If you find that you're going to be doing the same type of calculation over and over, it's often nice to rearrange the formula so that a different variable is alone and by itself. And that's what we're going to be doing in this particular section is taking a formula without really any numbers in it at all and then instead of evaluating the formula just rearranging it so that a different variable is by itself. Uh, this often looks really weird uh, because we don't see, usually we see numbers that cancel and combine and when you have letters they don't do that same sort of thing. But the steps that we use to solve and isolate a variable are exactly the same thing that we've been using for equations all throughout the quarter. Um, another name that we often give to these types of problems are called literal equations. Uh, literal because we see all of these letters in there um, within our equations that we're working with. And so with that in mind, let's kind of keep let, let's give this a try. As we start out with our first example here, notice that we have this formula for distance and speed, d equals r times t. In this case, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to solve to get r by itself. And right now the r is caught up in the formula and it's got something else on the same side of the equation as it. It's r times t, so to get the r by itself we need to do the opposite of times. We're going to need to divide. So I want to get the r by itself. It's times by t, so I'm going to divide by t on both sides. Now on the right hand side, when I do the times t and divided by t, essentially that's going to cancel itself out and just leave me with one r. That gets the r by itself. On the other side of the equation, I have d divided by t. Well, I don't know what d is. I don't know what t is. They're completely different variables. Um, and so that's as far as I can go. I can't do any additional simplification. But again, keep in mind that all we're doing is we're trying to keep exactly the same formula, the same unknowns. We just want to rearrange them in a different way so that a different variable is by itself. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, of course, we've dealt with lots of equations with lots of different types of pieces. We've dealt with things with powers and with radicals and with fractions and all sorts of stuff. And we can still uh, use the tools that we've learned in this course to get any of those types of variables by themselves. In our next equation, we want to solve, this is one that's used sometimes in machine design, Q equals SLD squared. Something that you would like to, so the D is here. Notice that here we have several things on the same side of the equation as it. It's being multiplied with S and L, and it's also the D is being taken to the second power. We always get rid of, it's kind of that reverse PEMDAS concept. We want to get rid of those weakest link things. The squared exponent sticks around for the longest amount of time, so we can get rid of the S and the L that are not part of that exponent expression. Right now they're being timesed by S and L, and so what we can do is divide by S and L, and it's fine to go ahead and do that in a single step. When I do that, on the right-hand side, I'm going to be left with D squared, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to have Q divided by S, L, and I can't really do anything else with that right now because I don't know what those values are. Now, in order to finish, what I do need to do is finish getting the d by itself. It's being squared, so to undo a squared function, we can take the square root of each side. On the right-hand side, the square and the square root undo each other and leave us just with d. On the left-hand side, we end up with a plus or minus radical q divided by sl. Now, a lot of times we're not going to worry about the, S, the, the plus or minus possibilities over here on the right-hand side because when we're dealing with real-world measurements like we often are in formulas, having negative solutions for some of these variables doesn't make any sense. So we often will forget about that plus minus, but remember that is an important part of uh, solving an equation process. Here's another example. Here we have r equals 1 half a t squared plus v zero t plus r zero. Now a, a few things that I really want to make sure to point out here. This might be, this is one of the few times that we've dealt with subscripts. Um, the most recent time we dealt with subscripts was in the slope formula, if you remember this one. 
m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. These little subscripts on the bottom didn't really mean anything other than that this number came from the second point and this number came from the first point. So they were different values, but we both wanted, we wanted to associate x with it because it was an x-coordinate. That type of thing is going to happen a lot in formulas, especially uh, physics and other scientific formulas that we may run across. Here, having the little zero below just means that this v with a zero is different than any other v that we may see in any other equation. Similar here with the r sub zero. It's part of this r variable. We keep it together. It's part of the labeling system. If there's another, if there's like an r1, we cannot put them together, but it's not it doesn't, those little numbers that are written down below, those subscripts, do not mean that they are any actual value. It's not multiplied by anything, it's just a labeling convention that we use, and it's part of what that variable is. All right, so all of that said, we don't really need to know that for this particular problem. What I want, but uh, just so you know what you're looking for later. Uh, here what I want to do is I want to get the a by itself, and it's right here. There's a lot of things going on. It's being multiplied by a half. It's being multiplied by a t to the second power. We've got this v0t, and we've got an r0 here. We need to get all of these things on the right-hand side out of the way so that the a is completely alone. Always get rid of things that are added or subtracted first. So like this v0t is being added, so I would have to subtract that v0t on each side. I also have a plus r0, so I would have to subtract that r sub 0 on the other side as well. Here, that's all going to cancel out, plus r0 minus r0. And I'm going to have r minus v0t minus r0 equals 1 half a t squared. Now. A couple of things that you want to keep in mind here as I'm looking at this particular problem. Notice that here I have an R and an R0. Again, like what we were talking about there, these, this R0 means it's a completely different variable representative, so I cannot put it together with this R. This is as good as I can get so far. All right, now at this point, I notice I have this 1 half that I need to get rid of and the T squared that I need to get rid of. It's the A that I'm trying to get by itself. In order to get rid of the 1 half, we can divide both sides by 1 half. If we do that, we're going to get kind of a complex fraction. What would be a little bit easier here is to remember that if we have a 2 in the denominator, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we can get rid of the denominator. So here on the right-hand side, when I multiply this expression by 2, that's going to divide itself out, and I'm just going to be left with at squared, which is really nice. On the far right, on this left side of the equation, we have the 2 that's being multiplied by that whole group, and you can just leave it in parentheses like that, or you can distribute the 2 through. 2r minus 2v0t minus 2r sub 0. Again, I want to finish getting the a by itself. Uh, it's being multiplied by t squared, so I'm going to divide by t squared. Keep in mind, I don't need to worry about square roots this time because the squared wasn't with the variable I'm trying to get by itself. The a is already alone, and the t was the thing that was being squared, so we just need to move that over as a, two t, as a, as a t squared when I move it. So this, then, would be my new rearranged formula with the a by itself. I have the r, the v0t, the r0, the 1 half got taken into consideration here with all those 2's, and then I moved the t squared over by dividing. And again, all we're doing is we're just undoing every operation that's with the variable that you're trying to solve for in order to get it by itself.